Hi, and welcome back to another episode of The Vixen Voice. So today we are going to be talking about using your feminine energy in sales. And I'd like to welcome Bex Wood for joining me. Hey, Bex. Hi. <laughs> and shout out to Bex. This was actually supposed to be a solo episode, but we recorded another podcast and we were having so much fun that I uh, invited her to join us. So she has no idea what she's getting into. She's being <laughs> a good sport. She's going to be vulnerable and we're going to talk about this together. So Bex, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Let's let the emotional roller coaster continue. <laughs> for me, <Love> anyway. <laughs> this is what we're doing this morning. So here's what's funny. I went and put this uh, shirt on particularly because for me, this is my feminine energy color, this magenta color. And I pop on and Bex is almost in the same color. So how <laughs> fortuitous is that? Yes. I love it. So Bex, if you had to put a color to your femininity, I know we talked about this in our one-on-one -on -one interview, but... What, what is your color? Oh, you know, I, I really enjoy kind of a crystal blue teal, sort of like an ocean watercolor, like Love a healthy it. ocean watercolor. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> healthy <Yes>. water. So <laughs> awesome. I love it. So again, you know, what I find interesting, Bex, is so many women feel that they struggle with sales and they struggle with marketing. And it's so interesting because to me, sales is a feminine activity. And we're going to get into what that means, right? But do you, and actually statistics show that women are better at sales than men, right? So let's start. I think there's so many preconceived notions about what sales is. So I'm going to put you on the spot. If you had to give me a definition, I, I know you're a successful business owner, so you've probably overcome a lot of those negative connotations, but one, how would you define sales now? And maybe how has that evolved from what you thought before? Ooh, so now I would say sales to me is like a, a continued deeper conversation with my ideal client. Mm -hmm. That's what I see sales as now. Um, but when I first started my business, sales was so icky. And I feel like most of my experience with sales being a consumer has been like hard pressure, tactics, you know, now or never, um, those kinds of things. And I, and I think that was my mindset going into starting my business. I, I, so I hated any aspect of sales. I avoided it, even the good conversations, because it just felt icky to me. I had to get past that. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, because for me, sales is an exchange of energy, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, um, here's how I feel. I know that I can bring value to you and I can make your life better. And the question is, do you want that value? Mm -hmm. And what is it worth for you, you know, to pay? Um, and I agree. I think so many people have this idea when they hear sales, it's like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm not good at sales. Um, that's the first thing that comes up. And I think it's because, you know, and I apologize for this because I have friends who are car salesmen and saleswomen, and I know many who are amazing, great people, but we have this idea of this used car salesman in our head, right? Like the mm -hmm. stereotypical, like you said, follows you around the lot, you know, oh, this is only good for today, mm -hmm. et cetera, like this kind of pressure. And, and what's interesting is even in that type of scenario, um, so... I love Grant Cardone's books on the mm -hmm. psychology of selling. Um, I don't really utilize a lot of his methods, but he's very smart. Seller Be Sold is one of my favorite books. So if mm -hmm. you're having the ickies about mm -hmm. sales, I recommend that book because what it talks about is having an abundance mentality and also understanding that you can't help someone until you market to and sell them. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we all want to help people, but we can't magically help someone if they haven't been sold on our help. Um, and in that book, he also talks about, you know, Bex, I know you have an amazing life partner, Brian. Mm -hmm. You guys have two amazing kids together. Three, right? Yes. And, three well, three, yes, but yeah, three kids, yeah. but but two physically with him. So the yeah. point is like you sold him on spending his life with you. You sold him on having children with you. Mm -hmm. Even more importantly, you sold him on, you know, taking in your son as his own. Like you said, mm -hmm. you have a family. So thank you for correcting me on that. <laughs> and, you know, 
Brian sold you on him being worthy to be your life partner. So we're always selling in our life. We just don't think of it this way, right? Any decision Mm -hmm. we make, we have to sell ourselves or we're being sold, but, but most importantly, we have to sell ourselves. So, you know, when you think of sales in that context of really helping influence people to do something good for themselves, and that's why I think in sales, if you have your feminine energy, I remember when I first started in financial advisory world in 2008, it's the first time I had to sell, right? And um, I remember this one sales mentor, Sid Walker, he was like, you know, he liked, he, he taught me to end with, hey, and I, you know, this process to help is to help you do the, make the best decision for you and your family, including doing nothing, which I think that always has to be an option in sales, right? To buy, not by move forward, not move forward. And I think if you keep the options open, it changes the energy. So what are your thoughts on that, Bex? Yeah, I think that like keeping those options open, I like to think of it as more of having a conversation and less yes. like selling to someone, but just having a conversation. Yep. For me, when I, in my business, when I stopped selling, like, you know, in an yep. advertorial kind of style, when I stopped that, one, I felt a lot better about myself and my business. Yep. But two, I just started having open-ended conversations and the people that were interested in having that conversation, my ideal client, for example, yeah. they participate in the conversation. The ones who want to yes. participate and the ones who don't, they can do nothing. They can watch, they can listen, then participate later or choose not to. But yeah. for me, like stopping the sales um, yeah. just helped me so much in my business. <laughs> well, because, you know, at the end of the day, like selling is solving a problem for someone, Mm -hmm. right? And so this is the part of the conversation. Do you want me to solve this problem for you or not? Meaning maybe you want someone else. Maybe it's not time for this problem to be solved, right? Maybe it's not that important to you. Um, And yes, it has to, you know, both sides have to have a buy-in that this is a mutual match Mm -hmm. (laughs) and Mm -hmm. we should work together or do this together, whatever it is. Um, I always think back to job interviews. I, you know, before I worked for myself and I went into job interviews, which by the way, could you imagine doing a job interview today? (laughs) Right? (laughs) I can't, I can't. (laughs) So shout out to everyone out there who did that. But, you know, luckily, I don't know if this was inherent or I just kind of viewed it as, okay, I'm interviewing them just like they're interviewing me, right? Because Mm -hmm. I wanted to work at the place that was the best match for me. And I don't feel a lot of people do that because of scarcity mindset, maybe like I need a job. Oh, this job pays well. Oh, I really want this job. And, you know, if it's a two-way conversation, I just think it's so much more impactful and it creates a win-win for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. So you, before we hopped on, were like, hey, have you defined feminine and masculine energy? Which we have had podcasts about that, but I love it because you asked for a refresher. And this is one thing I love about Bex and why I think she's so endearing and successful is that she's never afraid to learn something new, to relearn something or to ask um, when she's confused. So (laughs) I I, I just want to give you a shout out. I love that about you. But yeah, kind of when you said that hard, hard press now or never, you know, like masculine energy is very, we have a problem and we're going to solve it. Like I like to even call it like GSD energy, get stuff done, let's Ah, say, right? (laughs) So I go into my masculine energy when I have a tight deadline, when I need to Mm -hmm. get something done, when I need something completed. You know, my team and I will even set GSD meetings, we call them, which (laughs) we know this is not time for us to get in and chit chat or brainstorm. This is like a GSD meeting. Like we're getting in, we're getting to the bones, like we're going to make this happen. Um, And so masculine energy is like very logical, analytical, defined, moving in a direction, solo focused, right? Whereas, and there's a lot of value to that. Feminine energy is a little looser, it's softer. So communication is feminine energy. Uh, Community is feminine energy. Mm. Creativity is feminine energy. And actually receiving is Mm. feminine energy and so is rest. So that's interesting because if you think about sales, everyone 
if you're not good at sales, I'm just going to put it out there, right? <laughs> the reason people are scared of sales is they envision they're throwing up on someone, right? Mm -hmm. All this knowledge, I have to know everything and I have mm -hmm. to convince them this is the best. So if you think about like feminine energy of receiving, no, I'm going into a conversation to see where this person is at, what problems they have, what dreams and goals they have, and to receive if I am the right fit to deliver this to them, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's changing the perspective and the conversation. Um, it's more conversation based and the person you're talking to should be speaking more than you in my opinion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's one thing I learned too on my consultations. I have the best result and I get the most from my clients whenever I really let them do the talking. I answer questions yeah. and I and I can lead if it's a quiet moment, but I love to hear from them. What do they want to get out of their photo session? How do they want to be photographed? How what is the woman or man if I'm you know, whoever I'm photographing, but who is the person that you want to see show up in front of the camera and then let them tell you. Because like yeah. my idea of, of, of it might be very different than theirs. And, you know, it's so interesting because I, I actually had never had the masculine and or feminine energy defined for me. I just kind of imagined what it could be. And it helps so much to hear you say that because I feel like I am definitely most comfortable in a feminine state of, of mm -hmm. sales. And, and I kind of like, have you ever seen that there's like a viral video where this woman is singing in the middle of like this open field, like in Scotland or something. And then like, she's uh -uh. just singing this beautiful song. She's all alone. And then within like a minute, like all of, I think they're cows. They're like these big Highland cows maybe, but they just start, she's singing like this beautiful, like operatic voice, but it's soft and gentle, but just, it, I think it just gets picked up on the wind in the large open air. And these, these Highland cows just start coming closer and closer to her because they enjoy her song. They want more of that. And I feel like when Love I it. sort of adopted that kind of sales strategy, I'm, I'm just, I'm creating a space and I'm, yeah. I'm presenting like, this is, this is what I do. This is how I do it, what I do best. And then those that are interested, they are just flocking to me. I mean, flocking is not the right word, but they are slowly moving in to care more. And those are the people that I really want to work with the most because something that I'm doing is resonating with them and it's easy. Yeah. Like it's not hard. I'm just being yep. myself and it's resonating with them. And so they're coming to me and I, yeah. I love that. And I'm, you know, welcoming them in. <laughs> You're attracting in your ideal client. And, you know, I had a couple of aha moments in my life along these lines. So I think it was, it might've been before 2019, 2018, 2019, you know, sometime pre COVID. That's yeah. how I define life <laughs> now as I think most of us do. Mm -hmm. I, um, there was a speaker at a financial conference talking about how to have like excellent client service and, you know, really be proactive in it and take care of your clients. And I really liked him. So he put on this whole conference on client service, which was not specific to the um, financial industry. In fact, a lot of people were there from the beauty industry. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go because, you know, you always want to take care of your clients. And at that, there was a breakout panel on how women buy. Right. And mm. so I was like, oh, this is curious. I've never thought about women versus men and how we buy. And, you know, this is before I understood feminine and masculine energy. And I went in and the statistics then, this is at least four years ago, probably five, were that 85 percent of purchasing decisions were being made by women, mm, right? Interesting. Because mm -hmm. if you think about it, and they use the analogy, like even something you would think of as stereotypical male, like buying a TV, right? Like men want the biggest TV. They said like, what often happened, they studied behaviors and the wife would be like, honey, do you want this TV or this? Like the wife was still controlling mm. the decision, right? Even though mm -hmm. you think that's something a man would do. And uh, mm. I think it was at 85, but it was 83% of decisions. And so they were talking about how if you change your language to speak to women, because traditional sales has been masculine based and speaking mm -hmm. to men and how they make decisions, um, you know, and women are more relationship based, they're more community based, the good of everyone taking care of their family, um, that you would actually be ahead of the curve. So I went back and I changed my whole sales process. Yes, as a financial advisor, we have a sales process mm -hmm. because <laughs> if we don't go through this and you don't decide to hire me, I can't help you, right? Um, and so what's interesting is 
in that space, most new financial advisors really struggle with asking for documents to do their work. So you can imagine to do your job well as a financial advisor or to do an analysis for a prospective client, you need all of their investment mm -hmm. statements, you need their tax return, you probably need their will or trust. So these are all pretty like confidential documents, right? And so a lot of advisors are like, how do I ask for this? But they know they need it to do a good job. So anyway, when I changed that first meeting with a prospective client, I changed it where we started. I, I would do um, values, goals, and tools. So first we would talk about what was important to them and what made them happy and what their ideal retirement looked like because we were helping get them retired. And, you know, so we went through that and that would be a deep conversation. And then it was like, OK, let's talk about financial goals that would support what's in this first column. And then tools is like, OK, what do you have? Like the statements and stuff. I hardly ever had to talk about tools because we would get to that part and they would be like, oh, April, don't you ask me to bring tax returns and statements and stuff? Don't you need this stuff? Mm -hmm. And they would ask me because I had changed the conversation, right? So I didn't have to ask. I was receiving and I didn't even understand that was feminine energy at that time. I just did that. Mm -hmm. um, so I bring that up because, you know, I still, my brother purchased my firm and sometimes I still work with the advisors because, you know, he has a large mm -hmm. team and I'll help train them because it's hard to be everywhere at once. And so one of the male advisors called me and I was like, OK, walk me through the conversations you're having trouble with. And he needed to make this shift, right, to ask more questions and receive information. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening and you're a man, it works for you, too. We all have feminine and masculine energy, but tapping into that part is softer. And the other thing they showed was they did research. When you switch to speak to the woman, the man likes it too. Mm -hmm. They don't even know they want to have that kind of conversation, right? But they enjoy it. And so women, you're, I mean, uh, Bex, your clients are mm -hmm. primarily women, but you work with some men. So do you see a yeah. difference in that? You know, um, yes. And I can tell you, so when I started my business, my photographer mentor, um, she teaches really to focus on selling to women because that's yeah. who really makes, and, and photography is often an emotional purchase, right? All, um, well, first of all, all purchases are emotional, but go ahead. Right. You're, right. You're right. You're right. Emotional. <laughs> and so I was taught to really focus on women and to, you know, yeah. and sometimes a woman might hire me for her you know, man that's in her life. So that's what I did at, at first for probably like at least the first year. And again, though, I was still in that, I was still in, I think my masculine energy for my sales yeah. process. I was advertising, you know, when I say advertising, I'm, I just mean, I was just, I was really selling. I was like, this is how much, this is what you get. Let's do it. Right. Kind of thing. Not like inviting them into the conversation of like, Hey, let's go deeper emotionally and get yeah. some really great, authentic, photographs that really capture your personality. So now that I have started this conversation with anyone, you know, just almost mm -hmm. in a sense with myself in this sort of internet void, but people are coming in and joining yeah. with me on this conversation. And what I've noticed is ever since I made that change in my, I guess, in my sales process, um, by not selling, um, mm -hmm. I've had men really coming into my sphere who yes. want that experience for themselves. And they are buying it. They're, they're the ones, yeah. I think, I guess they're kind of tapping into that feminine energy. And they also know they're probably selling in a majority to women. And so they want to have images that, that are appealing and not this, Rah, let's get it done. You know, they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're more like, yeah. Hey, I have a personality. I want to talk to you. I'm interesting. I have this offer. If that's yeah. offer, would you like to come in my world? Those are the kinds of images that I love to create. And I've realized that that's a hot commodity. And, and mm -hmm. I think that, you know, it has really helped at least the men that have come into my sphere to really, I think, cap capture, I don't know, to really enjoy that feminine energy and not to kind yeah. of be scared of it. They're really embracing it. And that's, I've had some of my favorite clients now that in the last year or so that have been men. And it's shocking to me because I never, I never thought that would happen. Yeah, no, I love that. It's so funny because I, I think the stats have changed now, but um, on YouTube at least, because um, I don't think I have a breakdown on the other um, sites, but on YouTube, um, you know, the Vixen Voice is geared toward women. 
60% of our viewership on YouTube is male, right? So mm -hmm. they're curious about these things too, and they want to learn. Um, so I love that. Which yeah. speaking of, talking about the Vixen Voice, I just want to shout out, we are offering, we just had phenomenal news. We've been in it for six months now, and we found out we are in the top 25% of podcasts looking at the numbers. In fact, we're verging on the top 10%. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask a favor. If you get value from this and you're tuning in, share the news with your friends. Let's push it over that 10%. And we couldn't do it with all of you, without all of you listening. And it just makes me happy to know that people find value in my amazing guests like Bex today mm -hmm. and the conversations we have. So as a thank you in the show notes, go find the show notes. And by the way, the easiest way to get the show notes every week is by subscribing to our podcast on our website. Just go to vixengathering.com slash podcast. But we are offering you a complimentary 30 minute coaching session with me as a thank mm -hmm. you. So you'll find it just in the show notes of this show. So go take advantage of that. Um, and when we chat, share with me any friends that you have invited in and we'll offer them the same thing. So by the way, do that soon because it's the beginning of the year and my calendar is open. Um, by end of first quarter, it'll be closed because I'll be busy with all my coaching clients. So would love to talk to you. Thank you all for listening. And Bex, thank you for being an awesome guest. You've been on here so no. much. So, <laughs> you know, you it's, me. No, it's the amazing women and men we talk to because we have had a few men. So um, mm -hmm. thank you so much. So that was fun news. So Bex, what other kind of ahas have you had in your like selling journey as, you know, first of all, you were, you were in, let's call it the corporate world because you mm -hmm. worked for a large law firm, right? Mm -hmm. Like kind of running the admin side. And then you went into, you know, your dream of being a photographer and mm -hmm. a solopreneur. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I can imagine that the selling part was scary at first. Talk to us about that. Oh, you know, it was. And I, I think I've had yeah. a block on selling for as long as I can remember. And I think one of the things that I loved about being um, a, like a, an executive administrator at, a, a, in law firms is that I didn't have to do the selling. I did everything except bring clients and and you know practice law. I handled everything yeah. else, and I think I was so comfortable with that because I was scared of of, of that sales process. And um, so when I started my my business, that was one of my first big hurdles to get over was just having mm -hmm. a sales conversation. And you know I made a ton of mistakes when I started out. I was I was much more into like a hard sell you know, just m much more masculine sales tactics and, um, in getting past that. And then, you know, once I was comfortable with that, I realized, oh, it doesn't have to be this way. Like I can yeah. still sell and, and be more of myself. And, and I've had more success because of it, because I've, I've just leaned more on my feminine energy and, um, I'm just much more comfortable in that kind of a state of being. And by doing that, and, and I, I feel like I've attracted more clients of the clients that I really want to have because yeah. they're resonating with that same kind of energy. So um, yeah, that was an aha moment for me looking back. It's like, oh, I know why I stayed in that career for so long, even though it wasn't fulfilling, it was a very safe space for me because I had success yeah. and I didn't have to worry about getting new clients because that's scary. You know, that's a scary yeah. thing. Like, okay, I, I might not be able to pay the bills if I don't have clients come in and I don't know how to bring clients in because sales was just an icky thing for me, you know, any kind of a, I'm the kind of person who, when I go into like a department store and someone asks me, how can I help you? I'm like, nope, just looking. I'm fine. <laughs> Leave me alone. I don't want to be sold to, you know, but I need to, I, I you know, I, I, I need to get to know people and the things that they offer because I am also a consumer. So yes. sales is important. It, you can't get away from it. I just, I prefer a different tactic, like just more of that conversational style. Like this is what I offer. It's out there. Are you resonating yeah. with that? Join me if so. Which I think is successful sales. I mean, we talk about tactics, but there was good sales and there's bad sales, right? I mean, you're either good at sales or you're bad at sales. And again, mm -hmm. a lot of it's the intention you go into with, you know, we're talking about feminine energy, like nurturing is an important feminine energy. Mm -hmm. So do you genuinely care about this person across mm -hmm. from you? Do you really care about what their pain is and what their problems are and if you can help them and solve them? 
or maybe it's not pain and problems, but maybe you can bring more fun and joy into their life by what you do, right? So tapping into that energy. And then another feminine energy is being fun and playful, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you're in a relationship, you know, if you, if you have a masculine uh, significant other, you know that he appreciates when you are fun and playful. Like mm -hmm. every woman understands this. So, you know, don't take yourself too seriously and also help the person you're talking to not take themselves too seriously because mm -hmm. often in these conversations they are sharing fears they have or pain that they have like they're being vulnerable if you're good at having this conversation mm -hmm. so one be nurturing be caring be loving and two don't be afraid to be fun and playful and help them have fun and you know Bex I know you do that in your photo shoots right mm -hmm. but do you do that in the process leading up yeah, I do now. I do now I like because I've started that conversation instead of like just advertising. I'm having yeah. a conversation where I'm, you know, it's something that has struck me and you probably experienced this in the financial world too, but ha booking a photo shoot for so many people, men and women, it's a very emotional process. And a lot of times it's, mm -hmm. it's a hurdle that they're having to get over just to show up in your studio that day. And I know for yeah. my own self, we have a financial advisor. She's fantastic. I love her, but I dread those meetings. And I think it's because of just my own money blocks that I'm like, Oh, I'm yeah. dreading this and I have to deal with it. And it, and it, it zaps me out, you know, for the, for the whole day. And so I try to imagine that it's a similar thing for my clients. They may need mm -hmm. photography for many reasons. It could be for their business. It could be because they, they're feeling the reality of, of life and they, they don't have pictures. Maybe they've, they've hidden from the camera because they, they don't like something about themselves. So it's a really, yeah. uh, it's a big process for people to go through, to come into the studio just in the first place. And so I like to build up that trust. I, I'm a very loving and compassionate person. And so I like mm -hmm. to express that with people and let them know like, Hey, you know, so many people have struggles with this too. What are your struggles? Yeah. What are, what are the hurdles that you're having to climb over even just to have this conversation with me? And then they'll just start talking and it goes so deep. It just is surprising how, how deep mm -hmm. often we can go. Um, which I think is just, it's part of a healing process. And then, you know, we create beautiful images in those, in the studio and it's a huge positive, um, outcome for something that was very scary. So yeah. I, I like to think of it as I'm kind of holding their hand as they're also climbing out of their own pit of whatever they're dealing with. Yeah. And listening is part of the feminine mm -hmm. essence, if you think about it, because it's receiving, right? Receiving what this person is sharing with you, whereas like doing, giving, speaking is more masculine energy. So mm -hmm. um, I love that, you know, because I think listening, I, I mean, I won't go to, we don't have time for my whole story now, but at some ah. point I found myself teaching English in Italy when I was married to lawyers and executives because I couldn't practice law there, right? Mm -hmm. And I am so grateful for that time that I taught English to adults in their business yeah. because you have to listen. I mean, God mm -hmm. bless teachers because it's exhausting to mm -hmm. listen all day long, right? Mm -hmm. So for anyone who's chosen that career, they uh, that uh, they have amazing superpower um mm -hmm. but you know it taught me how to listen because i'm having to listen to correct them on the use of language right so i had mm -hmm. to listen so intently to what people were saying and that really honed my listening skills and i think that's why i was successful as a financial advisor and now i have success as a coach because mm -hmm. listening is so important and so yeah. Again, you know, really, instead of saying, oh, I'm going to go sell this person, because that's mm -hmm. icky to anyone, mm -hmm. right? Because, I mean, number one, I think people's free will is the number one universal law. And so we never want to feel like we're stealing from mm -hmm. someone's free will. We're helping mm -hmm. them get something they want. Mm -hmm. So if you can reframe what you do in your mind, I mean, Bex, I know for you, it's giving people confidence and mm -hmm. a beautiful experience. Talk to us a little bit more. Like, you're not just taking their picture, right? But what else are mm -hmm. you doing during that time with your clients? Yeah, I help, I help them to feel comfortable and at ease to be themselves because that's really what people mm -hmm. want. They want the best version of them just solidified in a, in a photo because we don't always feel our best. We don't always look our best, but we do want to be able to, especially when we're not feeling great, have these images yeah. that we can, you know, continue to sell our business um, because we do have to. That is, like you do have to have 
the sales arm of your business. If you don't, yeah. you don't have a business. You have to have no. sales. Um, but I think you're right. Like finding a way to 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 keep it from being icky and in a way it's like, I see your problem. Here is a solution. Does this solution work for you? Like maybe yeah. it could. And then it's part of what I do. I feel like 99% of my clients that I've ever worked with all have a confidence issue and it's compounded. I mean, don't we all have confidence mm -hmm. issues sometimes? But when you put that camera in front of them, it's it's just compounded times 10. It makes people feel yeah. very self-conscious. So my job is to help them to forget that I'm holding the camera, which is hard to do, you know? And part of yeah. it is by having a conversation, you know, mm -hmm. kind of around the camera and helping them just to feel comfortably themselves. Um, and that it's a safe space for them to just to unfold and to be. And that's how we get just the best photos because they're not putting on this persona. They're not like, you know, yeah. clammed up and stiff. They're, they're just relaxed and themselves. And that's yeah. to me, that's the best kind of photography, getting that real glimpse of someone um, that's in there that you might not see, you know, on a regular day. Well, and that's important work because what I heard you say is to help people feel at ease with who they are. So yes, you're doing it in that moment, which is a very intense moment. But when people see they can do it at that intense moment, it's easier to do it in the rest of their life. Absolutely. So it's really deep spiritual work that you're doing at a certain level. You're so right. And one thing that I've learned also when I, I've had my own photo shoot that was like, I did a really big deal, big photo shoot. It was yeah. a very healing, emotional process for me. And now like that was years ago and I still have those, those portraits. I, I printed them out. I have them in a beautiful box. And from time to time when I'm feeling unattractive or dumpy or whatever, just not a, a badass, <laughs> I take those out. I'm like, you know what? I am a badass. I'm a strong, powerful, beautiful woman and I can make it through this day. <laughs> and oh my it does gosh. help. Yeah. I love that so much. So unfortunately, everyone, we are short on time today. We will continue this conversation later. Um, but here's my challenge to you if you're listening, just like Bex just shared with us, reframe what you do. If you're feeling icky about getting new clients, um, you know, talking about what you do, reframe it to that higher purpose. So Bex mentioned being uncomfortable when she goes see the financial advisor. As a financial advisor, I knew it was my job to give my clients confidence, to empower them, to spend their money, and to help them have an abundant mentality, right? Mm -hmm. So when I go in doing that, that higher purpose work, I mean, everything else is a hiccup. Same for Bex and what she does. So today, what I'd like you to do to start your journey into more feminine sales, tap into that higher purpose. What do you really bring to your clients? How are you affecting their lives and changing their lives? And every morning, just like when Bex pulls out her pictures and says, you're a badass, I want you to <laughs> tap into that purpose and understand that's what you're here on earth. And that's why you've been made so imperfectly perfect as you are and mm -hmm. go out and do it. So Bex, thank you so much. I know you have a busy day. Thanks for giving us your time. And by the way, um, check out in the show notes, you'll find out how to find Bex and all about her Moxie project, which yes. focuses on what we're talking about, which we didn't even mm -hmm. have time to get to. <laughs> um, and follow her Facebook group as well mm -hmm. and follow our Facebook group of the Vixen Gathering. So all this is in the show notes, go find it there. Easiest way to do it is to subscribe to our podcast on vixengathering.com slash podcast. All of this magically delivered to your inbox. Awesome. Well, Bex, thank you so much. Go have an amazing day. Thank you. Always a pleasure, April. You too. Have a great day. <laughs> love it. All right, everyone. Just remember, how can I show up in love today? And what's my greatest purpose? Have a good one. And we'll talk to you soon.